All right, now let's shift gears and talk about the markets. Whether you like it or not, the Dow is down by 44 points at the moment. Todd Schoenberger, Managing Director of Land Cult Trading, is here to break the numbers down for us. So um, Europe is still sort of the leading driving factor. We did get a number of big earnings today, but it still seems like it's all about Europe today. That's right. um, the IMF trimmed its global growth estimate uh, to 3%. 3.3% to be exact for the year. What do you make of that? Well, they're probably being um, actually quite optimistic right now because mm -hmm. realistically, if you have a, a recession taking place in Europe plus the threat of a double dip pattern here in the United States, don't forget you also have China that is slowing down. When you incorporate everybody, you have to suspect that we're going to be below, well below 3%. We'll probably be closer to 2 to 2.5%. Uh, the, the, hist the historic uh, rate, though, has always been above what we always get. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I would expect as an investor you probably should start thinking about two to two and a half percent global growth. Okay, and sticking with the European theme here, you have Greece talks seem to have hit somewhat of a stalemate while European leaders are trying to figure out whether to give the country another bailout or not. And it kind of seems like they're scaling back again. You know, first it's that we need a deal or else. And now it's, well, even if there is a deal, they still might be in danger of a default. I mean, at what point do we get a definitive answer out of Europe? The, the Germans just yesterday said, look, you either make the deal or you're out of the euro. Mm -hmm. So they told the Greeks this, and the Greeks said, okay, well, we'll have a deal worked out. The problem is it's a house of cards because if the Greeks do not come up with a deal, what they're trying to do is get the private investors, hedge funds, if you will, to actually take more of a cut and not accept as much money back on these bonds. I mean, it is worth noting that they are already taking a major haircut major. on this debt. You know, major. sometimes people forget that and it makes it sound like all these investors are being incredibly greedy, and you may still think that, but it is no, worth pointing out, they are taking a major haircut already. But here's the problem, though. If Greece comes out with a deal right now, and that say they are, they're willing to assume, uh, to, they're trying to negotiate some type of a deal with all of their creditors, but the deal is much more advantageous to the Greeks, well, guess what? Then you got Spain, you got Italy, you have all these guys saying, hey, I want the same type of deal. Mm -hmm. And then you have a house of cards. I mean, can you imagine? Greece is so small, but if the Italians say that they default, you're looking at a G7 country, you're looking right. at a major risk globally, clearly that can be uh, impactful. Do it. So it does impact us here in the United States, but globally, you talk about 3.3%. If the Greeks default and then there is a house of cards with all the other countries that are vulnerable mm -hmm. in that region, forget about it. We'll be well below 2% for the year. So, I mean, what's the best way this could play out? Is there even an ideal scenario here? 50%. They got to they stick with what they initially said. 50% haircut for all the creditors. They're going to give up 50%. The Greeks won't mind that, actually, because it's not even their money that they're playing with right now. I mean, they have so much debt, and they've been getting bailouts as it is all right. along. So, realistically, if it's 50%, and then the hedge funds, everybody else can walk away, then that's fine. The issue, though, will be with those other countries, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain. What happens next? And, and Portugal. That I'm all sorry. seems yeah. the key. Don't forget the homeland, <laughs> yeah, though. Maybe in this context, I'd rather you forget them. There you go. All right. So, of course, with all of this going on, where do people put their money? Listen, it, Europe is going to be continue to be a headline driver. I mean, you got the State of the Union address tonight. Uh, there's going to be obviously a lot of campaigning there, so that's that's going to be a lot of finger pointing. We have already had enough of a divide in this country in the second half of last year. Mm. Then you also have the Fed that's meeting today, their two day meeting. There have been whispers coming out of the Fed that they may actually impose some type of a quantitative easing round three, another third round of printing money. The issue with that though is that we could start. We could obviously be talking about inflation in a few months, so that mm -hmm. could be impactful. That would be wonderful for stocks, though. If the Fed comes out tomorrow and says they're going to have a QE3, the Dow will shoot up 1,000 points. I mean, and how likely is that, really? Well, actually, you never know. I mean, because right now you have an economy, you have some macro points that have been mm -hmm. bullish, that have been positive. However, you still have an economy that is just sputtering along. And the central bank will say they're independent, but you know they're going to be leaned on by the White House because, let's face it, if you can manufacture some type of wealth effect in this country for voters, that's going to be wonderful for the president and, uh, and his reelection campaign. Yeah.